the Maria Elena. First day. It rarely rains in dreams. We hit all time lows and very high estates. But rain, no, it rarely does in dreams. They say if you throw the lay of golden blossoms far as you can, and they suspend in midair, then fly back into your hand, you will return to this blue island under blue clouds rising from blue sea, blue above, blue below, all is blue between. Return to an isle where wind whipped trees of teak and mahogany clatter their twigs like castanets. With no thought of return, I press the golden lay into a book. Later, the book may rise. If not, perhaps the table. The Maria Elena, our lady of the tide, largest raft the world has known, rests upon the blue sand shore, grounded in low ebb, tethered by a silver cord to a seaside carousel. I am not a cloud, feed me. Press not into service one who maketh wine of olives to serve in porous cups. Wind of fragrant ladies' breath prefer, though it rarely rains in dreams. Carpets of interwoven string quartets support us as we take our tea and repair to sea to follow the argument of the ocean. To listen to the echo of a great bell tolled beneath the waves and toast the Maria Elena, queen of the blue tide, soon to sail. Toast the Maria Elena with a wink, a blink, a nod, a bouquet, a bougainvillea, and a hand-me-down guitar. Empty that guitar of its splendid oily rainbow, pluck it out with patience, the cleanest sort of vice. Stage the bon voyage with flagrant octarina, lace the mask to your face with living worms. Strong hands unite, sign it into conscience, Seal it with a fist, for sail we will. For each a hammock strung with sinew, bone, and tendon, soup and salt for each, and garnets in the gravy. Place, law, climate, and syntax converge like wind to make the Maria Elena thrash as though she were a living thing. A fragrance of excitement rising from the shoulders of a deck hung with wisteria, first in flames and then amazes. Now the blessing and the benediction, incense of carnation, clove and oleander stream from a swinging silver censer. The eye of the tabernacle winks as the chalice rises bolt upright on the altar, shooting arrows of communion into infidel and faithful hearts alike. Accept the benediction of a bent and bloody knee, skinned on a gravel court playing hangman in rotation. Shake a leg, blood lies still, clays the rover. There are rats in the scuppers, voulez-vous coucher avec them? The artist in the vein has flustered reason, the blood will not clot, worse, it will not flow. From a seaside carousel, a black-robed figure waves. A slow flick of the wrist from a sleeve without a hand. Toast the Maria Elena, pilgrim. Bear your lacerations with resignation. They will be healed within the seven days we sail. For a moment suspended, wedged between two ticks of time, caught between a sigh and inspiration, the Maria Elena hesitates, then with a shudder leaps into the cheering foam. The scent of orchids mingles with the silk strings of a light guitar. A blue-black cloud obscures the seaside carousel. We sail. In amniotic darkness, the queen of the blue tide sails beneath a counterpane of self-reflecting mirrors. The will of the wind be done. We trust ourselves to the providence of current and the wisdom of the waves. Second day, 
the dawn beside the lee and morning aqua glimmer, a clear prophetic sea walk leads to afternoon. A thousand different lines can populate a song and not disturb the sequence of its melody. Music hath no need of guardians, her sweet guitars, harps, bells, and calliopes defend her. Not the subject, but the cadence, less the cadence than the tone. Less subject, tone, or beat than angle of coincidence, seeking satisfaction of a seventh sense of symmetry. The Maria Elena glides upon the bright ocean of our second day. Everyone aboard her is a stowaway. There were no tickets for the passage. Hanged in their linaments, sinister spinsters prowl the foredeck and the aft in search of lost angelicacies. Thus do they pay their implausibility with regret, decline to elaborate, thin, wicked, and celibate. Thus do they signify to me, they remain in some sense chained and offer constancy, I'd not free them for the world. They will scrub the deck for secrets, discover blood drops and hasty crumpled notes of secret love. They will find small things of value, which they will not return. God bless them. Bell tower, peel forth. Awaken all sleeping souls. Shovel the master from ashes, an approving flame. The more the eyelids lower, the more an eternal visor opens on a vast mechanical vista. Words of emerald shine beneath a slow flowing sea with light, sighs, and laughter. What was it we feared when setting forth to sail upon this cheerful raft upon this sweet and glossy sea? Relax, fear is endless, but here, oh, here is time for music, for philosophy, for poetry, and even love. Here is time for recognition, reunion, and recompense. We will sail unto whatever port the winds prepare. Ah, blessed second day, two smiling dolphins breast our wake. Lost from sight, our shore becomes the lost blue heats of memory. An almighty knock shatters the placid waves. The sea becomes the sky full of foaming flame. Veins of the waves bulge till they burst and turn the sea to blood. A raft has no fore or aft. The Maria Elena has no sail. Hell's own violin and bacchanal upon the south deck wail. This is my creation, cries the thunder. I am pleased. Now mop it up. To be done, to be done. And then, under a swell, sat down forcibly and lectured by a cloud. As I rolled to St. Hilaire, the cloud declared, I met a crippled king with four fleshless hounds leashed by seven chains. A queen had he on the right arm and three queens on his left. Each queen had seven tongues, each tongue of two opinions. He combed the twelve hairs of his beard with a curry comb of glass. Ten times had it on a time before, alas, a broken. God above and Christ below, counting the king, the queens, hounds, chains, and all the several other things. How come it rarely rains in dreams? It is because there is no need. There are dreams in which other dreams are mentioned, contiguous in symmetry. But in dreams, it very rarely rains. that endured the night, the watch from which we woke from stormless slumber into the confectionery of a gladsome dawn. 
who saw that the hour is never the hour apparent, awaited a history of history from the hall of elucidation. The first day held questions, the second day posed riddles, today smacks of mystery. Let us question one another. Inside my fists, a theater of the dark, throbbing to the lovely lady without mercy. I came to question her, how comes she to question me? All is coincidence, one thing begets another. Ah, but I itch and I grow hateful for an hour, my language composed of noun, verb, and nudity. Slam the visor on this small change arcade, open it upon a rolling sea. From a sea song foaming with slashing brine, from a sunbeam springs a horse with tangled mane. Hands across the sky reach, meeting without touching. Feet beneath the sea stroll on carpets of anemone. The sea spills from its dressing gown of cloud, where seven-pointed starfish soar on silent wings. From a midday moon, there hangs a ballerina twirling slowly by her teeth. She is my witness. She gains the handrail, gently slides like butter, trailing down a sun winged deck, pat by pat. Is it she who watched the storm kick out the jams, the ghost of her for whom this craft is named Maria Lane? How came we to the sea? Who bid us come? There is not a sailor in our midst, not one among us. There are sunsets, stars, and omens to be figured, winds that promise ever greater fury. Without captain, crew, or lore, we are captives of the tide. It is better not to recognize this plight. It is better to wear seaweed socks than thrust a melon in your brother's ear. Tender-hearted ladies toss wildflowers from the lookout, out, out into a sunny flare of glaring trumpets. Before you cough, take your hat off. Diamonds, diamonds were nothing. We used to swallow them. We shall be increased in spite of cadaverous laughter. It stands to reason we provide. Bless the sailors and the girls who bite them. These limits I defend. Why overstep them? They are where they are instead of sails for the Maria Lena. Slime our horns with a balm of Gilead, clink skulls and drink deeply one another's health. A raging teardrop and a timid fire, completely misconstrued and glad to be so. You know best. Consorts of kings, how little comfort are forget-me-nots. Once, ah, oh, once, and then no more. Had I dreamt of rain, it would seem an unusual thing. Strike the visor on this day of mystery, open it inside the realms of sleep. I fall until I feel I must explode with spray of salt spreading ivory on the portal. Midnight. What should have been the moon whirls like a scimitar swung round the turban of some blood-drenched Saracen beheading stars. Questions on the first day, then riddles giving way to mystery on the third. Today commences with apocalypse. A shrill high fiddle note presides, transported to high ecstasy. Our fire-breathing eyes pour music back into the violin. Then saith God, call your son Loami, meaning ye are not my people, I will not be your God. You shall abide many days without a prince, 
A king, a sacrifice, an image, an ephod, or a teraphim. Blood toucheth blood, let the land mourn. Thou shalt be no priest to me. What? No teraphim? Supplication seems inadequate. It is too late for sacrifice. Perhaps some sort of bribe is apropos. Tossing my wristwatch into a snapping sea, my timepiece is returned by an indignant wave, rewound. The soft hand of one who is not, but almost present, begins to stir my hair with music. Three more days of this, a soft wind whispers, the poison will subside. The Maria Elena and her ocean will provide. A raft cannot ship water, the Maria Elena will not drown. It may float, be calm, or spin, but it will never sink. Those not disposed to vision gather on the west deck, trade yarns, and speak of remarkable spitballs delivered with a touch of fire. I go among them and speak of innings, runs, and scores. We will speak of going back for a long one and derive some simple creature comfort therefrom. Slam down the visor. The moon becomes again a moon of gentle incandescence over the smooth lapping swells. The lion of the ocean sleeps. Dawn, sea and sky, then sky and sea, fleck, foam, wave, luminous blue rose. An island lies off stern, inviting. Ah, if we could only swing the Maria Elena. But no, we are engaged to ride the mighty raft where wind and wave command. Mark it on the map and wave farewell. The perfume of its trees ride on the breeze which gently, firmly, sadly bars our entry. A very blue island beneath blue clouds against blue sky rising from blue sea. It is not a dream. Ah, no. It is another thing. It is a sunlit vision seen through rain. Fifth day, thunder without rain. A small skull carved of ivory sits right profile in an unlit candelabra. Yesterday, a determined smile carried one corner of the sky clenched between ragged teeth, the sky which is a sheet. Today, a docile banner flaps in half a breeze. A pipe is clenched between my teeth, unlit. Yesterday, a velvet-gloved claw bore a cup full of the sky in a milk-white vase, the sky which is a drop of blood. Today, I poured my tin cup of salty soup into the sea, but not as a libation. I had no taste for it. 
Yesterday, a girl with lips of amber printed a yellow kiss upon a rounded ring of sky, the sky which is my mouth. Today, a lump of anthracite hangs in a double dark sky, the sky below, the sky above, and in between, the sea. Yesterday, with stool and milking pail, I sat beneath the mother unicorn with hands of storm attempting to milk the sky. Today, nothing amazes or perplexes. It is all too weary to perplex. It only cauterizes or infects. All which was professed a joy becomes a present bore in light of one objection. I have seen this all before. Such redundancy calls for brass, flute, woodwind, and sweet resounding lips to play them. same song, sung to the same tune once too often, the answers to our questions have proved less than entertaining. A ride of a week and one week only, each day's sun ascends behind a different deck, is this a circle that we sail? We are reduced to ritual, we have burned our graven images for fuel, we find no significance in numbers or the alphabet. I look to the darkening sky and see no constellations, only slowly spinning stars without cohesion. From the southeast cusp of Leo pours the realm of galaxies. This is where you look to look far, far away. What begins with music will end with music. Between the music are a number of things which have to do with music lacking only melody. It is time for a midnight snack of oranges, rose water, and lavender pretzels made of china which snap between your teeth. pencil. I thought it with soft blue lead. I thought your picture used the flat side of the lead to shade. I penciled in the sky and made clouds with a kneaded eraser. You will be my masterpiece. I will sketch you from every angle. Six dolphins circle round the Maria Elena, one for every day we've been at sea. What profit reputation White cloud stallions dash in non-emphatic rhythm, bright as any tinsel in the chocolate dust of a red wind. Poor emphatic trumpets blare, why be dismayed? Without music we are prey to the strange arms of reason. Absolution, reconstruction, resolution, and forgiveness pour from the brass bells with a scent of lemon bloom. Glad to be forgotten, I go climbing in among the reconstituted constellations, searching for a certain star. Come shining from the after deck, sweet echo of the singer. Cello, lay your ecstasy like leagues of spongy moss. Emotions of the heart must be surprised. They languish for attention, are shy. I closed my eyes last night, but did not dream. At dawn, gently, gently, powder of rain. Silence has left a film of satisfaction, paper thin upon the transparent ocean. Oh, but not upon my heart. Instead, I turn the capstan to the squalid, squalid lee, north by north or south by south, upon, beneath, between the sable sky. In this way shall all hearts be protected. 
a tight membrane dispensing merriment and absolution. Again, a light rain. The sea devours these clouds. Storms are its meat. Our hearts will do for wine. Consider how rigidly the sky is painted, how we wear it on our head like a slowly spinning hat. The Maria Elena speeds along in a sleek current. A new moon on the horizon casts no hint of glare. Skies clear. Presserpy, whose invisibility signals rain, is discerned but not quite seen. An absence of a dream of rain. Six days at sea, much has been scuttled. What here at the end seems worthwhile to have brought aboard? A few things seem certain. Some scales, some equations, smaller matter, the particular music, or the mathematics forced from them. For in Burton it is all the matter, all the matter which scarcely ever was. Now one way, now another, both in others, however pure. Clay and cloud, cloud and clay, cloud and cloud, clay and clay. Leonardo's have leapt from flaming towers for you with no suggestion or remotest promise of fidelity. Gilded to the lily, you proudly plunge your hand into the hive and scoop the honey to your mouth. This clear, transparent honey has no flavor. Should the Maria Elena sail another week? Ah, no. It is forbidden by edict. Tonight we swing into our hammocks determined not to dream. The warmth we seek from bodies eludes us. Our bones are leather. Tone by tone, the midnight bell beats twelve bright claps of sweet forgiveness in these ears of ears, this night nights. Cratered rainbow ascends with ragged beam from a cup of morning coffee into later afternoon. The day is preparing for a secular advent, which may well fall shy of advertised proportions. Seven days a sail or a spin, however traveled, now at last the world lies uncreate, transparent to the core. The vacation hardly begun is over now. As the axis of our fantasy dissolves, we slowly wave in rhythm, waving at a passing raft where reflections of ourselves wave back a tear-stained flag hung from a rope of onions, waving to the flippers of seven silver silkies who have tracked our wake all day, now going separate ways, waving to children with gold eyes upon a seaside carousel who pursue one another in stationary joy with screams of laughter, Waving at a superior one step epoxy, good for bonding stainless steel to water, good for gluing the shoreline to the sea. Waving at an Italian organ grinder in a skip, his ape returns our wave with his glass beaded cap. Waving at a public nuisance spray painting the rainbow, and to seagulls circling counter to the spinning wake of the Maria Elena. Waving to a dark steamer, dim even by unclouded sun, something waves back, or perhaps it is a curtain. Waving to the crucified, who lifts a finger in reply. Waving to a blue, blue island, which was once our heart's desire. 
waving to a solitary gunman whose eye magnified winks from the crosshair sight trained in our midst. Waving to an inflatable giraffe bearing a pod in beret and shades, reciting, beating holy hell out of a calm drum. Waving to a foiled villain, cloak and top hat streaming, hissing as he twirls the points of his elaborate mustache. Waving, waving, waving at a lay of golden blossoms, suspended in mid-air, poised in indecision. When we'd finished waving, we danced to the creak of an iron gate, danced to the clank of the lid upon a boiling kettle. We danced to the squeak of chalk upon a blackboard, breathing the sweet powder of pounded erasers. We danced to the whistle of a carpenter stripping paint, and to the horns and sirens of a falsified alarm. We danced to the deep groan of shifting continental plates, and to the muffled notes of a jukebox in a hurricane. We danced to the whine of a dentist's drill, and the crunch of steps in fresh powdery snow. We danced to the howl of a spook from out a watery grave, and to the slither of its slimy seaweed chains. We danced in white and scarlet ephods on the ashes of our terra femme. We danced to the ripplings of a thousand string guitar, the decker washing music with treble frets of game conductor. We danced to the keen wine of selective devastation, to a world innocent of roses groaning beneath a deep, bold bass. We danced to the lullaby wail of one almost but never quite entirely present, whom we have loved but cannot fathom. We danced upon logs of teak, mahogany, ironwood, and ebony. The visor of the sky opened at perihelion, spreading to each horizon. And when we'd finished dancing, we broke down and wept. We wept for crimson laces and green leather boots. We wept at a full catch of sardines and at the pipe smoke of three fishermen in animated conversation. We wept because it so rarely rains in dreams. Our tears were fat, warm and blue by reflected sky. We wept for a three-bar jackpot in a ten-cent one-armed bandit spitting dimes and ringing bells. We wept for long, for long, forever. Caught our tears in tiny crystal bottles with blue glass stopples. As we continued weeping, our raft began to spin faster, faster, blurring like a pinwheel in a hurricane. We hold, we slip. Slide as the Maria Elena discharges passengers by centripetal force. Goodbye, we cry to one another. Forgive these imperfections, these tears of self-pity, and these infinite regressions. Some hold hands, some fly off separately, some by fours and threes to the place in which they land. Some land in a haystack in midsummer Somerset. Some land in box cars rattling through the Klondike. Some land in covered wagons moving west. Some land in borax mine amid the clatter of mule teams. Some fall down chimneys on Christmas Eve, brush the soot from scarlet suits and chuckle. Some fall breathless onto a seaside carousel among the gold-eyed children chasing one another endlessly. Some fall in the desert and crawl across the sand into a promising mirage that speaks of water. Some or none, or is it one land upon a blue island, beneath white clouds against blue sky rising from blue sea? After a week's unfolding, many things have changed. It is time now to change them back again. It is still true, in spite of the flight of Maria Elena, still true that it rarely, very rarely, rains in dreams.